Hey man, what's up? How you doing this morning? Doing good? That's good to hear, man. I hope you're uh hope you're doing well. Bunch of crazy going on. Anyway. <coughs> let me get my let me get my chair over here. We got a product I want to talk to you about real quick. And we'll get the day started. Cool? This is a super cool little tool. I like this a lot. This does um, measurements. It is a measurer. measurer. You can do um, laser measurements from here to there. Just by pushing the button. And it will measure from the tip to the wall. You can also <coughs> you can also do measurements this way. Just you can change the settings from straight line measurement to um, both end measurements. Now from there it'll measure both directions just by hitting the measurement button now it just measured out 10 foot and that's um, the top measurement the top measurement is from here to the wall and the bottom one is from here to that wall and it gives you the total length including the device if you hit the multi button here it goes back to the screen and the two bottom buttons they scroll so you can go square footage and then hit select and now your first measurement will be this way we will just hit this and it says 10 foot and then the next measurement is going to be this way of course I, it's hitting me so so it just gave me the square footage of this way and this way and it shows you the first measurement and second measurement and then it shows you the total measurement. I know you got glare off the camera, so I apologize for that. But also, you can go to cubic. You can, you can go to cubic measurement. It'll give you the actual cubic for the room space. You can go to measurement or uh, angle measurements. You can get all kinds of really cool um, features. Measurement is this way. You can do angle. It shows you right there where the angle is so it's a really cool device if you're doing a lot of um, trim work and you need to find the angle say at, the, at a staircase maybe you want to know what the length is from the bottom of the staircase to the top of the staircase <coughs> one of the other really cool features is is right here at the top there's a little um, arrow a little triangle right there and it gives you a leveling device so you can turn it over this way you can actually use it as a digital level so it's kind of hard to see it's really small print but you can turn it up and you can see it'll zero out when it's um, when it's perfectly plumb or level it will zero out so if you need to find the angle of something so if you need to go 45 degree angle you could put it on 45 degree angle use the laser to mark up um, on the wall or uh, against a wall or something like that to make sure that it is a 45 degree angle it's it's a super cool little pocket tool um, it's a really durable product just hold down the bottom button to clear it or you can throw it in your pocket it's USB chargeable so yeah it's it's a good little item to have in your tool bag I'll put a link in the description for you. You can look it up yourself. It's a DM262 uh, laser measurer. So yeah, it's pretty cool. You can do it in feet, inches, millimeters, meters, whatever you need. Cool? So, yeah, check it out, man. I'll put a link in the description. Check it out. Um, it, it's it's pretty it cool little tool to have in your tool bag. Um, you know, for like if you got to measure out for a window blind or you know, measure the width of a door 
opening or you know just quick long measurements like if you've got to measure a hallway you know instead of having a tape measure out and stick it at just beep you know done it's a it's a cool tool i don't do a lot of measuring um because most of my stuff i already know what it is so i don't have to measure it out but um if i was still in construction man that'd be a perfect little tool to have you know to measure out a width and length of a room for framing up or something like that but yeah check it out so today we got karen so that garbage disposal that what that sink leak that i've been on like three times now with a kitchen sink where i just replaced the spa, uh, sprayer i lost the the portion of the video where i was trying to find the leak and i found it she put in another work order saying that maintenance still hasn't fixed my leak okay because i tell you this if it's a garbage disposable gone now then she'll wish she hadn't opened her mouth over there yeah if garbage disposable starts leaking goes bad we yank them get rid of them it's too small of a kitchen anyways we still haven't heard from stinkies that nasty apartment we don't know where they're at we don't know what they're doing but i can tell you this much their dog was running around i think they dropped that dog like they didn't want to take it with them it's all the hair's all matted up on the tail it's scared to death um i got it to go back in the apartment so as of what 10 o'clock 11 o'clock yesterday that dog was i put that dog i got the dog back in the apartment shut the door that's a rough one we're gonna have to have somebody come and gut the place i don't mind doing the rehab on it but i'm not cleaning it out that's no not gonna happen and I had a guy make a comment this morning. Say I'm a. This is weird, really weird because I'm a. I'm recording this. You'll see this tomorrow. But I'm talking about yesterday, today. <laughs> Groundhog Day, bro. Anyways, um, I had a guy make a comment about that freaking trim, on that uh, utility door I did yesterday around that water heater. Uh, you gotta replace that corner bead and the drive off. No. Nope, that ain't happening. It's, you've got to, when you do maintenance, you got to prioritize stuff and necessary, unnecessary. You can't just do stuff. I can't spend, you know, eight hours in somebody's apartment trying to make a spot pretty perfect. It, it This industry does not work like that. You know, to, and not, I'm not picking a him. I'm just saying in general, you can't go around just like the wall on that bathroom around that sink that that pencil sink i can't just go around fixing stuff like that it, it, it's not cost effective you know it, it, you have to prioritize your workload per day i have two turns that i have to have done one has to be done today if i have to i'll push the other one off till tomorrow but those have to be done i have work orders that have to be done that are more important than fixing karen's trim behind beside the water heater you know it's not a room you know that or it's not in an environment where it's seen every day and blah 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 you know so anyways i guess that kind of got underneath my skin a little bit because <laughs> i commented back okay anyways i apologize man some some comments they get under my skin some of them don't so um on the subject of comments um i had a guy ask or make the comment yesterday he was like who are you praying to ba basically you know and it, the the original hebrew aramaic language the name Jesus was pronounced Yeshua. That's Jesus' real name. Just like God. Let me explain this. I'm probably going to get some hate on this, but I'm going to break this down for you. God is a title. The word God is a title. God's name is Yahweh. That's his real name. I mean, you I don't have time to dig that up to prove it to you. It's in the it's in scripture. 
somebody, I think it was Moses, asked, I think Moses or Noah or whoever, asked God what his name was. Here's what's really cool. Just a little Bible note. This is what's really cool. It's Yahweh. Okay? That's how we pronounce it. But it's, you can't really speak the name because it's really the Yah is an inhale this it really pronounces out as an inhale and way is technically pronounced as an exhale ain't that cool so it's that's cool bro so that means every time you take a breath you're saying his name remember that bro remember that so today we're going to have to go do this ceiling. I put another coat of mud on that ceiling. Got the mud there, got the pans, got the big blade out. Um, that's a piece of insulation. We need to put this in. Well, I'll just leave the truck for right now. So today we got to go do, um, got two turns to do, or at least one. Go check out water leak out. And no telling what else oh got one for you so that air it, you guys have to watch my videos to understand what I'm talking about I had the air conditioner that I went out I don't know a month ago and the breaker was bad remember that I replaced the breaker um, they put it in work order this morning their stove just quit working right in the middle of cooking I think we might have to replace that breaker box because it's it number one it's it's not cool it's out of code whatever but it's grandfathered in so I don't we don't have to replace every box in the building but when I started having problems with the breaker boxes we replace them I've done one I know it's I'm not a licensed electrician but I did stay at the Holiday Inn last night so we'll uh, get out of here in a minute and we'll go um, to the trash one We'll go, we're going to look at that lake again. See what's up with that. And then we'll do a turn. I, I try not to get in people's business in their apartments until like after 10. I don't know what we're going to do with Stinky. That dog's in there. I might have to call uh, animal control on that. So I've got another idea. Everything in the shop belongs to me toolboxes, cabinets, workbench, big cabinet, tools in the corner, shelves, this toolbox, table the day she's sitting on, everything in the shop is mine. What I'm thinking about doing is this, turn my front bedroom into my shop slash studio. I'm gonna leave this if I do it I'm gonna leave this in here because we got we I cleaned that big um, shipping container out and it had those huge big steel racks <coughs> so what the reason why I'm thinking about doing this is because this is all mine right and if I take all this stuff out of here and put it in my apartment make me a studio slash my shop I really don't do that much work in here but stuff like the air compressor, my car tools, some of these shelves, I can leave some of this stuff in here. Then I can take those big shelves and set them up in here and start organizing my parts out of the shed. Because the shed is just a freaking long term storage. So if I set this shop up here as the maintenance supply room, I think that that would be a better idea than trying to keep messing with this because I'm I'm boxed in here, dude. I'm really tight. Plus, I can do these morning briefs in my apartment. <laughs> in my underwear with a cup of Joe. Just joking, man. Just joking. The reason why I'm thinking about doing that is because I'm on. Uh, there's this rack system 
Uh, it's like a pegboard setup. You can get all these shelves. Stuff. I'd like to set that up. I'd like to have that, but I really don't want to invest that kind of money in this cubby hole. I'm tired of being in this cubby hole, man. I, I, it's. I'm in a broom closet, dude. You know what I mean? But I have an extra room that I have. It's my fitness room that I haven't been in in months because. I tore the or uh, yeah, I tore the mu the tenant in my elbow, and I lost all the feeling in my fingers or in my hand for, I think it was about a month. It would get, come and go, come and go, so I have to go through some therapy on that to figure out. But anyways, that's what I'm considering doing, and I think it'd be really cool. We could do um, moving that big toolbox would be the only hard part. That thing is huge. I might leave it here. We'll see. Okay, I'm just kicking it around, man. You guys let me know what you think. You think it'd be cool to do a custom shop in my apartment? It's my stuff, so why not? Let's go do something. But before we go, got to read that good word. Got to give you some good word for the day. Something for you to look up, man. Look up because you're freaking curious, man. The good word is Luke 11, 5 through 8. And it talks about um, persistence in praying. Just because you prayed one time, man, God's not a genie bottle. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to be pers persistent. Just because you don't see something happen doesn't mean God ain't listening. Yahweh. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you for the provisions that you provided me with. I thank you for this job. I thank you for my health. And I thank you for the wisdom that you give me, Father. Father God, I pray that you would watch over us today. Keep us from harm. Keep the evil one at bay. And I pray this in the name of Yeshua, Amashia. Amen. Kip, do something, bro. Let's go do some work. I did want to say one thing. Regarding yesterday's video with the guy who's gone and they had to trash out his apartment and I wrote on there You think that you <laughs> you all that huh? When you pass away man There'll be a grieving time, but then you're gone Just like this door Just like this door man That door standing wide open wide open think about this that door standing wide open one day that door's going to close you're going to be on the other side of that door where that door leads to is totally up to you man just saying this world will go on without you but what's on the other side of that door is what you need to worry about I ain't trying to fear factor I'm just trying to say Get right with God, bro. So, I need to double check, man, make sure this dog's not in this apartment over here. Stinky people. Because we haven't, she won't answer the phone. We haven't seen him. But I, I put that dog back in that apartment yesterday. And I haven't seen him since then. So, let's go check it out real quick. Hello? Maintenance. Hello? So, <clears throat> I get ready to get in the truck, felt something on my arm, look down, and I'm covered in fucking fleas, man. So I'm trying to get off what I can see. I mean, it's, it's infested, dude. 
they're all over me. So, this is all I got, man. I don't care what it is, man. I got dogs. You know? They're in my socks. They're everywhere. Especially my shoes. I gotta hose myself down to the freak chemical, bro. Poor maintenance guy. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They don't care. They don't have me in my sock. Up my paint leg. No. Kill him as I go, I guess. That's to spray my truck now. At least it's lower. Well, that's one way. That's one way to start a freaking day. Jeez. Pour up, bro. I'm gonna have the itches all day today. Wow. Oh. Yeah, like I said, I had, I had, I got fleas one time in my apartment, or yeah, in my apartment, and it was because I was in an apartment that had fleas, and I didn't think anything of it. But it, it ended up being so bad, we had to have the exterminal people come out and treat it three freaking times to get rid of the fleas in that apartment. And then I got fleas on my dog, bought the flea medicine to get rid of it, and the company had to reimburse me. Reimburse me. So I've, I've hosed myself down pretty good. They always want to check your socks. Because they get down in the shoes, man. Yeah. I mean, I, these shoes are almost wet. The good thing about these pants is they're uh, water resistant ish. So they don't like hose. I mean, I'm hosed down. I'm hosed. I smell like it. Look, cubicle, man. So just hope and pray, man. Hope and pray. I hose the seat down, the floorboard down. Because what I did was I come across the parking lot and I got it in the truck. And that's when I saw it on me. Just by being in there for that short amount of time. But I might have to take a trash bag from the office and strip down in the hallway. At least I'm the only one home downstairs. I have to strip down the hallway before I go into my apartment and then take and put some clothes on. Anyways, oh, the life of maintenance. The crap we have to deal with. Okay, so the work order says it's still leaking uh, water with a dry hand. You can feel the leak at the bottom with the electrical cord joins the appliance. I, I didn't find any freaking water on there. Just a dot. And she says the faucet is still dripping. You know what? I know how to fix this problem real quick like. Remove the garbage disposable. First, take oh, I already got the water set off. Take that little guy out. Right there. It's Alan. No big deal. No big deal, man. Gotta find the right one. It's gonna be like that, army. No, this is the other one. It's the other one. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get that hand off. with me <laughs> this is funny this is all I got with me I don't have my pliers but it works ish that thing will bite your fingers bro this 
it's got the little bitty fingers in it. It's a little bit balls down in there. So always be mindful of the big hole goes to the front. Set it right there so I don't lose it. It's got the little bitty spring loaders on the inside. Let's see if you can see that or not. But you have to take a real small screwdriver. A small screwdriver and get those little rubbers out. They just wear out, man. That's all it is. Spring loaded little seats. These seats wear down. That's all it is. Back in the day, I had to do this to every every faucet. We didn't replace anything. Back in the day. You can also use a pair of needle nose. Sometimes you can get a hold of it with the needle. Because it's got grip on it. The trick is, is when you put it back together, you gotta get the rubber and the spring back in there. But we'll replace the springs too. You can buy a kit for this, no big deal. This is all right. It's just discoloration. But anyways, so what we'll have to do on the Jolly Wama downstairs is buy cross tube, cross tube, New strainer with an um, don't need a trap on it because we already got a trap, so I just need to go across. We'll probably end up buying a whole new drain that way I get all the parts in one bag, and then the power cord is right here. So we'll have to put a box on the wall to kill the uh, power source. I'll probably just mount the box up there that way I don't have to try to cut all this wire off, you know what I mean. I'd have fixed the problem. Guarantee to fix that leak. And since I know that this tenant's at work and I can lock the door, I'll leave the bag here. Because I had somebody ask it whether they were curious whether I left my tools in the apartment. For this one, I am. Cool. So, we are going to do a disposable deletion right off the bat first that's why I love that Klein socket because it's got all basically all the sockets you need man for doing stuff like this and then everything just slides right on there. Cool. Let's just get rid of some stuff, man. Let's get some gloves on, bro. Let's get some gloves on. So, yeah, it, it happens on this man sometimes. They, you just have to get rid of it. You know what I mean? The, the tenant's just uh, disrespecting property so on the electrical it's a pretty easy disconnect just take you we'll set it up here so I can get a little better just take the little screw out of the bottom yeah you can see the water there's water in there yeah, because she ran it, let that uh, bottle caps in there. The bottle caps will crack the case. And that's what's happened. Where's my freaking needle nose at? There we go. I'm just gonna get in there. That's the reason why it wasn't showing up a big leak. Because. It's just cracked. Yep. I'm not going to put it back, so we'll just snip them. Snip it, baby. 
snipping wires. And look at that, they had the ground. Whatever, dude. That wasn't even the right wire. That wasn't right at all. Anyways, <laughs> we'll get rid of this. Dun dun dun. Let's get that up out of the way for a minute. I'm just gonna mount it back here. Cap the wires. Let me get my tools. Let me get my boxes out. A box cover. Some wire nuts. <coughs> and a peacemaker. That's what I call them. Just joking around there. <coughs> so like I said, what's all we're gonna do, we're just gonna we're gonna kill it. We're gonna kill it good, bruh. Just gonna get that in there. Clamp her down. Open up the end. Break it off. Stick the wire in. Put the little, the little keeper on there, bro. Tight. There we go. Pull the wires out. Put some wire nuts on it. Just so that the uh, circuit, because I'm not going to kill the switch. I'll just leave the switch. Kill this. And then push down in there. And then we just mount this to the back ball. Matter where you put it, as long as you put it, bruh, secure it to the wall, man. Stretch it over here so that wire's tight. Couple screws. Get that loose, get it up out of your way, and it has a lock ring on it. You use a screwdriver if you want, but I don't tear it. I'm just trying to get it gone, bro. All this stuff can go in the trash. That's cabinet. Cool. And then this ring comes off paper Get that out of the way story clean <coughs> trash so they didn't have any of my boxes I normally get this in a box so I had to get this one it's cost a little bit more because it's a plastic wrapper <laughs> So, take your bottom nut off, this nut off, this off, paper off, don't tear your paper up. Now we'll put some plumber's putty around that, 
dig it in the hole. Just clean your hole up a little bit. Get your plumber putty up. Bring it up. Put it around. Control for excess. Stick it in the hole. Just kind of center your hole, center it up with the hole best you can. Because when it pulls itself down, it'll straighten everything else up. Cool. <coughs> so my this style, I love this style. Put your, your paper in the rubber. The paper keeps it from uh, kind of holds it still a little bit for you. And you put it up there. Get, you might have to get some putty off the. Love these man, these are so much easier to do than a regular garbage disposable. But I may have a problem right now because I don't have a big wrench. I only got this. I don't think it's gonna work, bro. Nope. Well, oh, my bad. <laughs> Guess I did have a big wrench with me. Just want to torque these up pretty good because once we get everything together, we will retorque it. Cool, that's good. All right, so now we'll take drain part and uh, finish it up. All right, so I might be able to reuse this. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I'm going to be able to. So let's. Let's use it. This is kind of weird because this doesn't spin off. It just is one piece. And it comes with a rubber in there. So we can set this up here. It's just preset. Right a second. Well, you know what? I'm, since I'm putting it together, I might as well just go ahead and put a little lube on it, man. I ain't coming back over with this stupid stuff, man. Even though I know that that washer is going to work. I'm still going to put a little putty on there, just a little bit. You don't need to hose it down, just get it on there because when you spin it on, it takes, it uh, spreads it around for you. See what I mean? Get that on there real good. Alrighty. So, then I have to just kind of mark it. Uh, general, just. I don't even need to take off about half inch. So we'll get the little rigid out. Pop it on there. Just real slowly because I'm on the end. Yeah, you gotta watch it about being at the end because it will uh, snake itself around. Yeah, it snaked itself. What I mean by that is that uh, it walked itself around a little bit. It's okay. We can take the pipe cutter. But you go at it the old way, bro. Okay. I still need to take off another inch. Oh, wrong way. Like I said, just take your time with it. You know, and it'll feed itself around. When you're trying to cut something real small like that, you know what I mean? Let's set that right there. Looks about right. Set that right there. It looks about right. I'm gonna slight pitch this. So, we'll mark it off about right there. And put the old snicker on there. Snake around, bro. The reason why I like the using this is because it it tapers the end down. There's no sharp edges to it. Awesome. Put a ring on it, bro. Put a ring on it. I'm pretty sure that won't work. So I'll put a new put a ring on it.
it's not necessary to put pipe dope on every fitting. Now I'm going to run hot water as soon as we fix the kitchen faucet. And then we'll come back and tighten everything up. Cool beans. Alright, so on these faucet repairs. Ooh, that's getting hot. Tone it down a little bit. So on this faucet repair, you got two little holes down there. And I just bought a kit because well, I'm always need one of these. I wish you could open it up, but you can't. You got to cut the thing open. Get a size couple, and we get a couple new springs. A couple of little springs. These springs are painted, bud. But you got different sizes. That's the other thing you got to watch for. Just set it up against the old one, and that gives you the general size. But there's two. How about that? Two right in a row. Okay. And we got two brand new um, washers, or gaskets, whatever you want to call these little balloons. The hard part is putting it back in there. I usually take a, a bit and slide it on the bit, stick the bit down the hole, and then use my finger to mash them around. It's kind of, it, it is a pain to butt to get them back in there. Because you got to feel it. You got to make sure that that rubber's in the hole and not pinched on one side or the other. Once you get it in the hole, it you, you'll know it. It, uh, it sits flat in there. Put the washer. Where's the other one? Oh, my bad. Whoops, get that one back out. That's the old one. It's the newbie. Like I said, they're kind of hard to see down in there. It's got water in there. You just got to work it around. You got to make sure it's not half in, half out. There we go. There we go. You might be able to see that better. See how it sits in there? Cool. And then a little bit, make sure you put the it's got a groove and there's a little pin sticking out. And you put that pin in that groove. Okay. There we go. And now you gotta make sure this is around where it's supposed to be. Everything's got a groove. That's nice and tight. Then you put this back on. Make sure it's not it doesn't move while you're tightening this up. Cool. If I'm a wrench. A wrench. The wrench. I don't know if this will work on this or not. We'll give it a shot though. Ooh, just barely. took my pliers out to do something that didn't put them back They're in the shop feels good looks it's tighter that's for sure now she'll complain about it's too tight <laughs> let's turn the water back on it's pretty like I said, now she's going to complain about it's too hard to turn the handle. Usually, you'll start getting complaints like this stuff when the rank got jacked up. People will start complaining about dumb stuff that don't mean nothing. I mean, this is, it needs to be addressed, but she's being kind of a little over, over the top about it. That's all. Bet she won't put in another complaint. Hmm. <laughs> Probably will. My bathroom needs painted. That should take care of the drip. Cool. Make sure you throw those away. Don't keep them. 
So now we're going to run hot water in the sink. We'll run hot water in the sink to loosen up the plumbing. Okay. If you cut it, it would work better. We're just trying to smear it around. So now we'll run some hot water in there. Check the leak. Cool. Oh, don't forget this off because you know if you're going to say something about it. I mean, that water is freaking outrageously hot. So, like I said, as it heats up, the plastic will get soft. And then if you just, just give them a little snug. Seal itself right up. Whoa. Oh, no way. Whoa. I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. I'm gonna let that run for a couple more minutes. Double check. So I clean everything else up. It ran for 10 minutes. It's good. So now we got that taken care of. I bet she won't, I bet she, I bet she raised all kinds of heck over there. Anyways, uh, let's go check out this stove issue um, with the power. And uh, hopefully we don't have to yank the main box out. You know what I mean? Hope so. I've been sitting here in the truck for freaking 20 minutes. The tenant for the stove put on there no permission to enter. I can't go in unless someone's home. So I sent her a text via the system. Hope open she would reply, so I was sitting here going through the comments. I'm <laughs> answering questions, stuff like that. So I'm just gonna go on up here, man. And uh, hopefully somebody's freaking home. Otherwise, I, I can't go in. You know, it says no permission in, and that's no permission in. Because they have the option. When they put in a work order, it, it goes through a list of things. What it is, permission to enter, schedule time, whatever. So, do what I gotta do, bro. So the breaker was tripped. I thank God that they didn't go back and turn it back on. So I'm gonna let the office know we need to pull that box. <laughs> so I'm back after lunch. I told the boss about the breaker box, and you know they always give you that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a licensed electrician. <laughs> I'm not a licensed electrician, but it is a sub panel. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm gonna have some electrician on here. He's gonna say something about it. I'm not like the less than electrician, but I did one in the basement. I had one uh, breaker box in one of those the same building actually. Scary. Um, downstairs, the ground wire, the mount where the ground wire goes in. There was only one mount spot there in that antique box, and it was arcing. It was arcing so bad, or it arced so bad, that the uh, mounting bracket was this. It was gone, basically. So I shut her apartment down, cut the wall open, pulled the wires out, labeled what I could, and uh, installed a new breaker box. You know, I did a YouTube on that too, just to cover, make sure I was doing it correctly. And we haven't had any problems with that box, so that's probably what's going to end up happening. Is I might have to, um, I might have to get a new uh, a new box and uh, replace their breaker box. I just I look at it as it, it's a something else got to be fixed. I don't care much for doing it. But it's $1,500 for an electrician to come out and replace that box. And that's stupid because I spent less than 
I think I spent less than $300 for all the parts and installed the new breaker. So, anyways, I'm going to go get me some goat juice and then we're going to go mud that freaking bathroom ceiling. The last goat. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to knock the high spots off, mix up, mix up a little bit of mud and float that out some more. Make it look pretty. So my mud stuff on here out of the way. There's a mixer. Pan out. And my 90 minute mud is powder. Need a bit, so. That should be enough. Give or take, maybe a little bit more. That's quite a bit. Uh, I think, yeah, that's a little bit more than I need. Thing is, is it's it's compacted. When you take it out of the bucket. When you go to uh, mix it up, it fluffs up a little bit. So all you need to do is just add a little water to it. Not a whole bunch. I always use a little mixer, it's faster. Roll back and forth so you get it the consistency that you want. Always gotta take your time with it. Because it likes to stand on the water, you know what I'm saying? Mix it up. Keep mixing until you get all the powder. Until you get all the powder dry or wet. Push in the corner. Definitely gonna need some more. It's not enough. That's not even close. Set, set battery. That's probably enough right there. That's pretty good. It's got a high spot right here, so I'll probably have to do another coat. Then again, I'll probably just hit it with the sander. Be good to go. When the hell this little one? We'll uh, get it all straightened up. Put the bar back on. I don't know why the bar's off, but put the bar back on. All that covers. Uh, see if I can adjust this door. It just barely hitting I mean just barely I thought about taking a planer to it and just skim that whole freaking door off but before I go there I'm gonna see if I can't looks like it's been 
butchered up a little bit. What I'd have to do is take my knife and run up through here to cut the paint off and then run screws in to pull the door jam back. So let's see just how bad this is. It looks like it's just right here. Right here in this area. So yeah maybe I shoot a screw in there and see if I can pull it over. But besides that we will put the covers on real quick. New battery. Plug the stove and see if the fridge is plugged in. And then plug the stove back in. I beat the painter. Anyways, let's do it. So let's shoot a couple screws in right in here. See if I can pull the jam over. Just barely moved it. That's all I needed to do. There we go. Pretty. That pulled it over. Looks like it's hitting about right in here. Yeah, works great. That's all I have to do is just clean this up a little bit, put a little bit of caulk in that, and uh, cover up the screw heads, and it'll be good. It's a one bedroom. The odds on them shutting that door 80 times a day is about a million to one, so it works pretty good, I think. Let's do these covers, put these closet doors back on. Good to go. This portion line. See how it's uh see how it's lived down and not up. Well and they get there's too much hose in there. Okay. Now I need to get it above. Get it above garbage disposal. That's technically a loop and then some, but as long as I get it above the sink, it'll be good. Got to have a trap. Basically, basically it's a trap. It prevents the uh, water from the dishwasher from flowing backwards. Or I mean, uh, you know what I'm saying? So water builds up to here, right? So if the trap is lower or the line is lower than this, what will happen is it'll it'll shoot the water down inside the dishwasher. So you'll get water coming out of your dishwasher overflowing, getting water on the floor. You'll have water coming out of the rim. You have water leak. And that's exactly what you call. Or you'll get a call saying that the dishwasher is not working. When it is working, it just can't drain out all the water. Cabinet or a handle loop. Cool. Let's check the dishwasher. Looks good. We got a little water. Add a little water. And uh, kick it in the drain to make sure it drains properly. So the stove is level, but it's about an inch, inch lower than the countertop. So I have to bring it up. Normally, normally I use my airbag for this, but apparently I took it out of my bag and then put it back. So it's pretty simple, the process. has these little feet. You just adjust them up. Yeah, it kind of bites if you don't have something to hold it up. Get them started. I already know I got to come up at least an inch. The front feet come out pretty quick. 
I just adjust it up, check the corner. Yeah, I'm almost perfectly high. I'll go a little bit more right there. So I've got it now so that the edge of the stove is flush with the countertop. Boy, that's loose. I have to fix that. <laughs> Anyways, now I have to get my cross, level this out. Same way, just down here. Just crank her out. It wasn't adjusted when they installed it. This is the contractors doing back in the day. They just push them in a the hole and go. It doesn't even have the grill on the front of the refrigerator. You know what I'm saying? It's supposed to have a grill there. Anyways, the clean lady still got to come clean. I just want to go ahead and bang this out real quick. Get it over with. Almost. It don't take much with them front feet to uh, adjust them out. Cool. Looks good. Cause see, if you don't have it, if you don't have the fridge stove level, what will happen is people will, you'll be cooking food and the food, all the food runs to one side, all the liquids. So it's just good practice. So now we'll raise up the back. <laughs> this is kind of the easiest way to do it. Since I don't have a freaking airbag with me today. Take the level. I got a magnet level. And you Stack it to the bottom of it so that uh, I can see how, how high to bring it up. Or you can also put it on the foot. There's a uh, over here on the side. Let me get you down here. You can also get it on the side right there and uh, watch the bubble. Just bring it up. Cool. Right on, bro. Front to back. Side to side. It's the little things that matter, bro. Yeah. 